All right, well, let's jump in. So uh, welcome anybody on YouTube. If you guys like this content, make sure to like and subscribe and share it, right? We'll share, share these videos, get them out there. Um, let's get some, uh, some views if you like it. If you don't like it, no big deal, no hard feelings. But um, I think this is good stuff. And today for our Tuesday teaching, we're going to be in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, and I'm going to go down through 10. And the reason I like this, these verses is these verses really are the verses that, that changed my life. And this is, um, you know, as somebody who, you know, used to be on drugs and in jail and prison, all this stuff, like this verse right here, it was applying like these principles to my life that really got me to the place that I am today, which I actually like, <laughs> you know, um, all that stuff is, is in the past now and the Lord continues to bless my life. And a lot of that uh, credit goes to just living out this verse. There's a lot of great verses in the Bible that will talk about the plans that the Lord has for you, um, you know, a future and a hope. You can find that in Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, Second Chronicles 16.9, we talked about how the eyes of the Lord, you know, are, are looking for loyal hearts to, to show strength on their behalf. We talked about that. All this really exciting stuff, but none of that, um, you know, I wouldn't say it doesn't do a lot of good, but it, it, let me just say this. To experience the truth in those promises, it's really helpful that we develop like this mindset that is... No matter how hard this gets or how hard or crazy or challenging, you know, things are in my life, like I'm not giving up. I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, man. I'm no longer, you know, throwing in the towel and saying, you know what, Lord, I tried it. I'm going to go try something else. It's really getting to a place where it's like no matter what comes my way, I'm in. I'm in. And, and the reason I like this verse is this verse right here really practically tells us how to um, you know, be in for the long haul if we put this stuff to work. So again, scripture, you know, memorizing it is really a, a, an amazing, important thing to do. But if you don't put it to work, it's it's you're just you're just somebody who knows a lot of Bible verses. And even though that might feel great and it might help you from time to time, it's better if if we not only just know the verse but we actually live them out. Right? This stuff isn't here just to you know, have like something nice to put on a card, you know, that, that you give to somebody or, you know, some nice scripture you say in a prayer. It's here to really, you know, help us to walk and live out a life that is pleasing to the Lord, that he wants to, you know, be just like blessing and just pouring out, you know, all the good stuff that he promises. Um, so, so these things are really important that we take them and they find a place to land. The verse five, so Proverbs uh, chapter three, verse five says, and I'm just going to read these one by one because they're just, everyone is so good. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I'm just going to say it again. Trust in the Lord with all. That's a big word right there. It's small. It's three letters, but that is a big word right there. It's all your heart. It's not part of your heart. It's not hey, you know what, I, I trust in the world out there, you know, 25% and 75% I give to the Lord. The Lord is saying, look, if you give me all of your heart, this is the way forward. You got to trust me. You got to trust me. I'd say that probably 90% of the reasons that we freak out, have anxiety and have fear is because instead of trusting the Lord, we're going somewhere else with our mind. We're going somewhere else with our thoughts. We're not coming back to God. Because if we really were trusting God in his ability to provide for us, protect us, and all that stuff, we would, we would be able to relax a little bit more and be more present and be in the moment and not be freaked out. And so trusting in the Lord is an amazing pathway to peace if you really do it. And if you trust with God with everything, I'm telling you, the house around you could be burning down and you could be, you know, obviously this is a metaphor. I don't want you to stay in a burning house. But metaphorically, you know, there could be all this craziness going around, but because you trust in God with all of your heart, you know that no matter what happens, the Lord is able to use it for his purposes, right? Sometimes, you know, the enemy comes against us and, you know, there's, we, we experience attacks and so they have, but God can even use what the enemy meant for evil, for good. And so it's just getting to that place with the Lord where I submit all my heart 
I trust everything that you say. You know, I'm going to put it to work. I'm going to, you know, I believe that you're sovereign. I believe that, here's a big one, that you can do miracles. A lot of our fear is based out of like what we see and trying to, to piece together the puzzle of our life. And, you know, when the pieces don't seem to fit, we have anxiety and we try to figure out like, okay, what's the detour or how, you know, how is this going to ever, you know, come to something good? It's just, there's just not enough to work with. And we sometimes forget that God is a God of miracles in an impossible situation is fertile ground for a miracle, right? So if you have an impossible situation in your life, like praise the Lord, that's like the Lord loves to show up in that situation because, you know, he, he loves to move in power. And so it's just little things like that when I talk about trusting the Lord that kind of help me at least to um, not give up, not throw in the towel, to keep moving forward with him regardless of what I see, regardless of what, you know, I think is going to happen. I'm actually going to trust God in that, that piece, that second piece is do not lean on your own understanding. I think most of us are guilty of trying to figure it out and trying to understand the way forward, trying to understand how is provision going to show up, how to understand, you know, like how could God make a way. And what we sometimes do, which is unfortunate, is we make decisions out of that place that actually bring in more stress or, or problems into our life instead of just leaning on God instead of my ability to try to figure it out. Remember the scripture talks about that God's ways are higher than my ways. His, the way he thinks is higher than the way I think. And so I, I really don't do myself a lot of favors um, trying to figure everything out. Um, if I can just trust that the Lord, you know, that the promises are true, that he's got a plan and purpose for my life, not of evil, not to harm me, then I should just be able to, in that, if I trust God with all my heart, relax and breathe and not make any decisions that are rash that are going to actually cause me uh, more headaches down the road, right? Uh, he says in verse 6, he says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So uh, I love this, um, this idea of, and also, I trust God with all my heart, and in all my ways I acknowledge God. So the way that I live my life, I'm bringing God into this equation. I no longer am just living a life that, you know, I just get up and do whatever I want, whenever I want. And, you know, I got God, you know, off at a distance. And, you know, I just, I'm going to die one day and go to heaven. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what I can make this life. It's a life that is submitted to the Lord and acknowledging Him and bringing Him into my ways, the way that I do life, the way that I pray, the way that I, you know, pursue relationships, all of the above. It's, it's getting into that place with God and acknowledging Him. And it says, He will make your path straight. So there's just a, a, a cool piece. I'm going to read a little bit more, but I think all of us want the straight path, right? We want the Lord to get us to you know, our destiny, to that sweet spot, to that purpose. And again, why I like this scripture so much is because it really practically lays out some steps this isn't, you know, science rockets, as I like to say. This You can put this to work today and understand this. And if you live by it, it really does help. Um, but yeah, so trusting God, not trying to figure it out. Let, don't scratch that itch. Um, acknowledge God in the way you do life. Like, do life with Him. You know, acknowledge that He's with you. You carry the presence of God. That's pretty amazing. So just that connection and doing life with God is really important. Verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. So, you know, there's an element of, of again, just that submission to the Lord of like, it just, it's okay to admit that like, I don't got it all figured out. Like, I need God. I need, like, I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, be the smartest person in the room. I don't need to, you know, toot my own horn and, you know, and, and be like, look how wise I am. Like, it's okay to need God. In fact, it's like the Lord's wisdom a lot of times looks a lot different than the wisdom you're going to get in the world. And, you know, you'll read through the scripture and say, well, that's not how maybe my parents told me how to do that or my, you know, my boss or my teacher or whatever, you know, and it's just getting that place of like, man, I submit to God's wisdom and I, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay 
to make mistakes. It's okay to, to be vulnerable with the Lord. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to let go of my pride. I'm going to give it to the Lord. I'm going to submit to his leadership in my life. And I'm going to start turning away from the stuff in my life that the Lord says is evil. And I, I want to kind of double down on that just for a second. Because it's, it, it's not what the world says is evil. Because the scripture even says that people are going to say what's evil is good and what's good is evil, right? So, you know, we're not looking for what the world out there says is, is good or bad. Because a lot of us, we will look for, you know, somebody to be that yes man. And maybe they don't know the word of God. And it's like, hey, what do you think about this that I'm doing? And they might be like, well, hey, that seems fine to me. What does God say about it? You know, what does God say? You know, and, and it's important because that's that, you know, it says the fear of the Lord. But to me, it's like an awe and respect for God as creator of my body, of creator of this, you know, universe, this planet, you know, like just submitting and saying, this is all yours anyway. Like, show me what is is right. I'm not here to try to tell God, you know, what's what what's evil and what's good. I'm, I'm here to, to hear from him, um, you know, how he defines that. And then put that into to, to play in my life by turning away, repenting, coming back to the Lord, changing behaviors, denying myself, you know, all that stuff. Where at some point we kind of got to put on our, our big boy or big girl pants and say, you know what, okay, I know I used to like to live that way, but I'm actually moving in a different direction and um, take a little bit of, of control. He says... In uh, verse 8, and I love this, and this is, you know, where we're, we're wrapping up, but it says, it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. I love that. that there's The Lord is saying, like, to live this way, to trust the Lord, to stop leaning on your own understanding, to turn away from, from you know, evil, um, you know, to, to not be wise in your own eyes. There's actually, you know, this just popped in my mind, a lot of health problems come from stress, <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of, even spiritually, you know, when we attach ourselves to sin and we're opening up the door for different spiritual influences in our life, there's actually a lot of truth to this, that if we start moving away from the things that, that are not of God into this cool relationship with the Lord, that there would be healing and refreshment for us. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had something in my life that, you know, maybe I like to do, but, you know, the Lord's like, hey, like, let's not do that anymore. And you know what? I, I finally make that decision that I'm going to let it go. That It's never not been a blessing to me. It's never not brought healing and refreshment into my life. And sometimes that's hard to see in the midst of a habit or something like that because you just, you, you know, today I would like to say, you know, these cell phones got us all pretty addicted. So, you know, it's like, I don't know how many people are watching or in this room right now that take this thing to the bathroom with them. And, you know, it's pretty much on you all the time. And, you know, we're watching uh, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and news and all that stuff. You know, it, it, something like that, it seems harmless, but it really can be, um, you know, quite the, the little addictive device that a lot of times is taking away our time and our, our peace and our are calm and, you know, and, and uh, kind of keeping us from the Lord. So, you know, whatever it might be that the Lord, you know, is, is highlighting or maybe leading you away from, I just, I promise you that it will be healing and it will be refreshing to make that decision to trust God in, in that matter, whatever it might be. And then in verse nine, it says, honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine and so just I love that last um, piece there is you know there is something special about taking that first fruit of whatever it is that the Lord has blessed you with and saying you know what I give this back to you you know a lot of times in the, people are like you know the church they just want your money you hear all this stuff but it, it's like no the Lord is looking for you know, trust through this, right? Like, it's money is one of those places where sometimes it's the hardest to trust um, the Lord with because we are really attached to it, and you know we hold on tight. And again, all those fears that we talked about that kind of keep us in a place where we're freaked out. 
Um, isn't it amazing that we could instead come and say, you know what, I'm not, I choose not to be afraid. In fact, I'm going to give over my first fruit to the Lord. And I love it. He said, if you do this, you honor the Lord from your wealth. He's literally talking about your money. <laughs> um, he says, from all your, your first produce, so whatever it is, and, and our life's effort is usually producing some sort of income. That's you know kind of how the system's set up that your barns will be filled with plenty and that your vats will overflow with new wine. Anyway, I just really like this scripture because there's a lot of cool promises there and there's really practical, um, you know, a really practical application to it. You can look at that and it's not a mystery. You don't have to, you know, study some, you know, theology class to understand what God's talking about. You get it, right? And if you apply it to your life, the promises are yours because the Lord does not break his promises. Um, he fulfills his word. He's trustworthy and, you know, you can take it to the bank. And um, anyway, I, I think that's helpful just to, to apply to our lives and, and, you know, see what the Lord will do to that. And again, not take the word of God just as, you know, hey, I something to memorize, but something to put into play in my life. Because I want to walk in more peace. I want refreshment. I want a straight path. I want my barn. I don't have a barn. But I have a bank account or, you know, whatever, you know, or my guitar room. I want it overflowing with, with you know, God's blessing. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, I hope you guys were blessed by that. And that's all we have for this week.